GarageBand and Logic Pro are very much related. And unless you enable the complete features in Logic Pro, they're pretty much the same software. Now, I've personally never used GarageBand, but I've spent 10 years in Logic Pro. There are many features inside of Logic that use GarageBand resources, and there is one thing inside of GarageBand for iPad that I wished Logic Pro for desktop or iPad would use. Stay until the end to find out what that is. Now, did you know that Sampler actually uses GarageBand? Click on the user preset menu and go to GarageBand to use these. You can also view these within the library in Logic Pro. Now, if you don't understand how the library works in Logic Pro, this can be a little bit confusing. You hit the key command Y, and you'll see a blue disclosure triangle here next to the channel strip. And you're going to want to make sure that this is focusing on the channel strip because if it's focusing on the instrument or audio effects, it has different behavior. I've provided a free resource inside of the description. So if you want to learn more about how the library works, go ahead and check that out. But anyhow, if I go back up to the channel strip settings and I hover down under legacy, you can see the GarageBand software instrument library here. Did you know that there are GarageBand loops inside of the Apple Loops library? Go ahead and click atop the loops library to isolate the GarageBand loops and use them within your session. Some of them are actually pretty cool. Did you know that you could find GarageBand channel strips to help you mix your songs? So let's say you have some drums or guitars that you want to mix. If you simply go up to the channel strip up here and you click, hover down all the way down to Legacy, you can find these great effects here, GarageBand. Some of the vocal strips sound really nice and check out the drum offerings as well. Here's one for drums. So this is without the effects. And this is with the effects. Awesome, right? Now, if you don't see this content within Logic Pro, go into GarageBand and make sure to download everything from there. This is where your files are going to be located. It's about 14 gigabytes, more or less. Did you know that there are GarageBand instruments that you can use inside of Logic Pro? If you go to the channel strip and you click on the channel strip settings, go all the way down to where it says legacy, and you can access those instruments here. Uh, there's no need to applause, just go ahead and subscribe and we'll call it even. Now, like I said, I don't really use GarageBand, so I'm not sure why some of these are duplicate categories, but there you go. The integration of Logic Pro and GarageBand really is amazing, and it makes it easier than ever to have everything you would ever need to make music within your fingertips. At the time of this recording, we have about 30,000 loops in the Loops browser alone. Now, there is one feature, as I said earlier, that could make Logic Pro 100 billion times better, and that is smart strings found within GarageBand for iPad. This nifty little feature here will allow you to play strings in a tactile fashion. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up my iPad. I'm gonna click on Smart Strings over here on the left-hand side. And using my index finger, I'm simply going to move up and down vertically to get this sound. Now that is so incredible to be able to get that kind of user experience. And on the top right here, if I move to autoplay, check out this amazing feature. never seen anything like this. I love how simple it is. You can include all of the various string instruments, or let's say you want to get rid of the basses and cellos. You can also work the program like this.
such a great feature and I can't wait for integration within Logic Pro. Thank you for watching this video on where are my Logic profiles. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. In the next video, we will cover the most important files in Logic Pro. Thanks for watching.